Hi, this is Derek Sai from LearnMyBlogging.com. I will be uh, reviewing this book called Art of Work, Art of Work, by uh, Jeff Goins. Jeff Goins is the author of this book, The Art of Work. And you can follow along here in the book review of my uh, blog. The Art of Work is the uh, lighthouse for those who are lost in finding the meaning in their lives. The book will give you some hints on how to find your ways. The book is also a guide post for those who think they are achieved success in their life and met their callings. The book actually will prod you to rise above it and continue to leave a legacy. The author provided a fit for example, a lot of fit for example for to make his points. It's wonderfully done. I came away so pumped up and convinced that of, of my working on my callings. Highly recommend this book. The book's uh, website is the uh, artofwork.com, and uh, you can check on that link. I'm gonna do a quick summary of the book. There are seven stages. This seven stage of finding your callings. Uh, number one is awareness. Number two is apprenticeship. Three practice, discovery, profession, mastery and legacy. It's the seven steps. I go, I'm going to go over them uh, very briefly. And then if you want details, of course, you can definitely read the book. Uh, awareness is listening to your life. The worst way to be happy is try to be happy. If you're trying to achieve happy, uh, you need a reason to be happy. And uh, a calling comes when we embrace the pain, not avoiding it. You must believe in what you are called to something and to cultivate the, the awareness. You must be willing to act, to step out and see what happens. Opportunity always comes to those with the open eyes. You do know what your dreams is, you're just afraid to admit it. And that's a quote uh, from the book. Write it down, note the significance of every major event in your life. Might give you a clue. It takes commitments and the risk of not committing, com committing is greater than the cost of making the wrong choice. Because when you fail, you learn. And like Walt Disney, they decided to become a cartoonist after he got injured and uh, stayed in the, at home for two weeks. And that's when he had that eureka moment that he wants to be a cartoonist. Apprenticeship. The teacher appears when the student least expects. Traditionally, it took about 10 years. This is kind of common uh, understanding that uh, takes 10 years to go from apprenticeship to a journeyman, and a uh, journeyman is the intermediate stage, uh, more like an intern, to a master. You cannot master a craft on your own. Uh, accidental apprenticeships are everywhere. You must listen to your life to recognize them. Uh, there lies uh, Ginny Fang's story uh, in going from a unwed pregnant woman abandoned by her boyfriend and her own family to become becoming a dola. Adola is a pregnancy uh, coach. This happened in uh, Singapore. And running her own business. So the story is a testament to the ability of the human spirit to endure and the power of the community to help you. I never find, we never find a calling on our own. We always need help. So keep in mind to learn something, apprenticeship, practice. Once you have an idea, you gotta practice. When trying isn't good enough, Excellence is a matter of practice, not talent. Even the most gifted people do not have what it takes to succeed without the right attitude and the ears of deliberate and deep, deep uh, learning and deep practice, meaning that uh, deep means the result in failures. There are three requirements for deliberate practices. Require context, you need to have a context, a time and energy from an individual as well as a trainer. And uh, number two is not inherently motivating activities. If it's enjoyable, it's not a practice. So a deliberate practice is actually quite painful. And cannot be done a very short, a very, cannot be done a very long time without leading to exhaustion. And you uh, need to push yourself to the point of sheer exhaustion. Often the only way to know the difference between a hobby and a calling is to put yourself through the crucible of painful experiences. And 
a painful practice. So accidental apprenticeship is such that uh, long before a person is ready for his calling, the life is preparing that person for that future through these chance encounters and serendipitous experiences. So seizing the lucky moment and doing something about it may be the difference. Number four, discovery. The process of finding and claiming your calling is a journey, like the Bible story of Samuel. He had a transcendental encounter with God, uh, if you read the Bible story. And the three stages, number one, you got to hear it. Number two, you got to respond to it. Number three, you got to believe in it. And then leap, and more like uh, building bridges, and keep moving towards something that's meaningful and life-changing for yourself and the world. Number five is profession. On the way to meet your calling, you may encounter many failures uh, when you need to pivot. And successful people, organizations like Groupon, don't succeed in spite of failures. They succeed because of it. So pain is a greater teacher and failure is a painful mentor, a faithful mentor. Don't turn into a season of failure into a lifetime of failure. So you need to pivot. By recognizing the hardship, number one is that recognize the hardship as an opportunity to learn, not to succeed in the wrong way. Number three is be ready to make pivots along the way. Don't ask what if, but say let's, let's do something. So stop dreaming and start doing. Not all calling will lead to success or fame. So it may not be a... Uh, uh, it's not a sure thing. Number six, mastery. Live a portfolio life may be the way of the future. In the, in the future, everybody going to lead a portfolio life. You don't just have one job. You have all of those things that you do. You have free, fee work, fee work, salary work, homework, study work, and gift work. Combining work, home, play, and purpose in your portfolio life. And mastery is something that goes beyond the competence and skills. And it means that the approaching one's life as a creative work. So stop trying to be famous. Focus instead on trying to be successful. Try to reach the state of flow as Chisholm Ming Hai uh, described in the separate book. It's also responsibility to use our gift in the most challenging way so that other people can benefit. And to be given away, which leads to the chapter 7, a legacy. So think of your work or calling as having a legacy to help others to make your work and calling more meaningful. And no need to wait until your retirement. Life has a funny way of teaching us that sometimes the most important stuff is the ordinary stuff. The smallest moments, the one that we think are insignificant, are the one we will cherish the most. Your calling is not about doing something good in the world, but becoming someone good and letting the goodness impact the world around you. Very nicely done. A success isn't the final goal, the legacy is. On the other hand, don't let your calling consume you. Life is not a support system for your work. Your work is a support system for your life. So this kind of you gotta have that balance. The author suggests to work hard passionately, but acknowledge the limitation of one, what one life is capable of. In the end, success isn't about what you do with your life, but what you leave behind. So calling is about leaving a legacy that matters. The, the end of the book, so that's the end of the book, and then provide several questions and exercises in the appendix to help you find your calling. Okay. Overall, it's an excellent book. If you're still lost and uh, you want to find something, find what's your true meaning of your life or what you intend you are called to do and find your calling. I hope that was helpful. Until next time, bye now.